Well, hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today I'm gonna to show you how I start my sourdough starter. So I started this one and I've actually used it a couple of times and I just fed it so it's just getting happy. And um, it's so wonderful. So you can use your sourdough starter for all kinds of things. You don't have to have yeast, it collects wild yeast from the air that's in the in our environment everywhere and bacteria and all that to make the most beautiful artisan breads that you'll ever make i made this one for you it's one of the best loaves of bread i've ever had um and it came from sourdough starter that i started uh, about a week a little over a week ago so i'm gonna start from start to finish Lisa from Sutton's Days and Patty from Alderman Farms are doing the same thing. We are all doing sourdough starters and then the journey of making things the whole month of February. So we'll be posting videos once a week, once every few days, depending on how often we use the starter. Um, I've got biscuits in the oven. Uh, it's a biscuit recipe that I'll share with you as we proceed in the um, starter videos so let's get this is so simple and i do this is how i do it if you do it different or you think it should be done differently then by all means go ahead i am doing this in a wide mouth mason jar and i'm putting in a half a cup you don't need to have a big giant jar of starter unless you really do a lot of you want to use a lot of it a little starter will actually um, do more than you think in a recipe. So, literally, that's it. And equal water. So, and I use warm to um, tepid water. I'm gonna grab, I have these wooden chopsticks. I, I like to stir with that. So, literally gonna get this all mixed up. And I'm gonna feed this once a day for a week and we're gonna see. Now, when your starter is done, you could take a spoonful of that and put it in water, it will float. Um, also, another way to test it is, it's gonna go from smelling um, kind of sweet to smelling more fermented. And that's really, that's really all you've got right there. So just a thick, and you can thin it down if you want your starter thinner. I don't think there's any, um, no harm, no foul. I, I say do what you, an experiment. This whole journey is, um, has been an experiment for me. I have not done starter since I got up here in Washington and I'm right on, I mean, the water's right there, the Columbia River, and then also I'm very close to the ocean. So. The wild yeast in the air should be really good. I've had um, sourdough from this area that is delicious. So that's what's prompting me and um, the girls. Well, they're, um, so you can cover this with a paper towel, but I have this really fine mesh that came off of a vegetable. It's a vegetable um, bag that you can take to the store and buy your vegetables. And just so the yeast can get in there. If you cover it with plastic, and seal it off, the yeast can't get in there, but um, a paper towel will do and it can still get on in there. And then you're gonna set this in a warm environment um, between 70, 70 to 75 degrees is perfect. Now, my house is not that warm during the day. I turn, you know, I don't have the wood stove going and I, um, I don't leave the heater up that high, I'm just, I'm not here, so I'm not doing it. And you can change out to, your jar will get kind of um, messy after time, but you can actually see the activity in the bubbles in here, just from me just feeding it not too long ago. So when you add this to a recipe, it then ferments and um, the yeast activates all the gluten. And it's just It's just such a wonderful process. I can't urge you enough to go ahead and do that. And go check out Lisa and um, Patty and see what they're doing because we're all starting at the same time. 
and I'll leave links to their channel down below. It's not an official collaboration. We just decided let's do this together and we're all in different parts of the country. So each sourdough is going to taste different and it's going to act different. So, and we've all got different, we're all using different flour sources too. So if you think about it, all right, guys, I can't wait to see you as I feed this starter and I'll show you what I do to feed it and you can discard or not discard. I typically, because I start at such a small amount, I don't discard. I make sure it's got plenty of food and when it's, it gets too full, then, then I make something, right? All right, we'll see you in the next video. I can't wait to share. Okay, so I'm gonna feed my starters and they did fabulous, except the top is drying out on this one. So I'm feeding mine um, like twice a day. So two tablespoons of tepid to warm water. And I'm gonna try um, what one of our little experts has advised and that's to put a damp cloth over it. So to the, the new starter is still okay, but my older one, it's got a dry, it's got, yeah, it's got a dry crusty thing going on. So, okay, so I wanna dry this out and just take your, you know, it's equal parts to me. This is how I've always done it. Does it mean it's the right way? Nope. But hey, it works. I have wonderful luck. Now, because this one is going to actually end up too full in the jar by the end of the week when it's where I can use it. So I'm going to have some discard. Then I will discard. But I don't discard every day and add to it. I don't, I don't know. So that little hard cap that was on this one is going right in the mix. And we're just, yeah, mixing it in. And I think covering with the, the, I want to do a tea towel, but I'm going to cover it with a damp bar mop. We'll see if that works. If not, you know, we're going to go to a tea towel. And, and then I, yeah, this one, oh yeah, this one got really, really happy today, which is so cool. Just, you know, the first day it didn't do much. The second day it went, hi, I'm, I'm extremely happy sourdough. And it could be because, you know, I actually transferred some of the starter. If you think about it, I transferred some of the starter from this one, the older starter, because I, I use the same stir stick. So. I, I don't know if that's making a difference or not. That's my journey. That's how I'm doing it. So we're going to cover them up and rinse off our stuff and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so I'm here. I fed, I fed my starters yesterday and now I'm back to feed them again. And um, my tops are kind of drying out, you know. And um, a friend actually suggested that, I mean, that top goes back in there and refreshes and rehydrates, but then you get this hard crust that nobody talks about on the sides of their jar, unless you transfer your jar or change jars every day, um, you're gonna get that. So I, um, um, Lisa and Patty, um, I think it was Patty's suggestion to do, um, a cloth, a damp cloth over the top. And the yeast can still get in, but yet, yeah. So I am gonna add flour, my flour. And my flour is an organic red, hard red wheat flour, unbleached. So it's as close to me doing it as we can get. <laughs> and so I'm gonna add in each jar a quarter of a cup of my flour. Okay, and that's, it doesn't have to be super exact, but I know some people have to weigh everything. So a quarter of a cup, and this is the old starter that I've already used, and um, I'm actually getting ready to use again. 
And so I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna use a quarter of a cup of warm water, not, not hot by any stretch, but warm. And maybe not even that much. I don't know that I really need it that hydrated. I kind of like the thicker, yeah. I might add less to the, I might grab, grab some more flour in there. Oh, and it's already, it's already bubbling. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it, but it is already going, hello, thank you for that food. Let me add a little bit more. <clears throat> Since this is the one I'm really focusing on, yeah, and I may, there we go. Now I want more of like a, a foolish or a pre-ferment kind of thing. And then I don't, I don't wash this off. I'm gonna go right into the next one. And it had a little bit of a crust. See how, now that I just deflated it, it was pretty risen up. That's pretty cool. Okay. And we're gonna add that quarter of a cup and a little bit of water. And you can add, you know what, if you just wanna feed it slowly, like this one can go into another jar and go into the refrigerator and just get fed once a week at this point, if that's all I wanted to do. And then when you want, take it out, feed it, let it kind of um, get all happy for five or six hours. Um, but because it's still been out, it won't take five or six hours for it to, I'm gonna put it in the proofing oven. A Little bit more water, not much. That's just about right. Because I want about three-fourths of a cup of um, starter for my dough. So that's what I'm doing. Every day this is getting fed. And if I'm going to feed it, like if I want to do small feedings twice a day, you can do that. It's kind of like having a, a pet around that you've really got to take care of. So there it is. Can you see the bubbles? I don't know if you can see. I'm not sure, but I sure can. And they will, um, in the proofing oven, they will take off. So just kind of, I'm probably gonna get a new clean jar for this too when I when I do that, just to, to maintain my jars. It's, it's kind of, that's, that's the trick. If any of you guys have any tips or tricks on, you know, what, whether you use a jar, a plastic container, what's easier to keep clean, all those things. Let us all know in the comment section below. So on goes my little bit of knitting to let the yeast in. And in the proofing oven, it's gonna go. So I'm super happy about that. And then I'm gonna come back and start uh, using, I'm gonna start some bread with this and um because this one's been going for a minute but okay there you go and i already showed you the recipe for the bread and how i how i did it but i'll be i'll be bringing you along for some other beautiful loaves of sourdough even though i'll use the same kind of the same technique we're gonna um we're gonna show some of those so stay tuned okay guys so here's the last day for my starter feeding my starter so I fed it every day and I actually pulled some off of the old starter, the one that's ready to use. And how do you tell if it's ready to use? So you actually can put some water in a bowl and if that starter, if a little bit of that starter, you put it in there and it floats, it's ready. Um, it also will have a lemony tart, very tart flavor. That's already, that, taste ready to me, but let's taste the other one. Um, the one, the older one. And as you can see, I am making bread. Oh yeah, very tart. So what you can do now, I, I need to transfer and it's, I just fed it. It's already bubbling. It's already saying, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna transfer it into another bigger bowl so I can have more starter because I'm making several loaves of bread this week and, and or, or items. So 
I'm gonna bring you along for a lot of those. And I just, my last video was using the sourdough starter from this batch. So you could actually divide this, give that, you could take off some and give that to a friend as, and that would be discard. If you didn't wanna make anything, you could give it to them and they could have their own starter. Or you can do like what I'm doing and taking these happy little starters and I'm gonna keep my jar a little cleaner by doing this and I, you know it's pretty it's pretty liquefied it's pretty hydrated i'm probably going to go ahead and add a tad more flour to the mix because i i did a quarter of a cup so i'm going to add another good tablespoon to that let's see and my oven is preheated to put my my loaf of i'm going to do a round loaf of sourdough, but I gotta preheat my Dutch oven. So go back and watch that video and see how beautiful the bread came out. So you, I, I kind of want this a little bit pastier, a little bit heavier, so two more tablespoons. And get this all stirred up until I've got a thicker consistency. And then I'm covering my starter because it dries out. I mean, I have a wood stove. So it's a, a thick batter. So thicker than you would do for pancake, well about, yeah, a little bit thicker than pancake batter um, is about the consistency. I don't get too particular about it. This one I believe is just fine. And this, you can tell when it starts holding together, it's really got some, some oomph to it. I love it. So there's that. Okay, we have our starters done. I hope you enjoy all the videos that, um, we are going to bring to you between the three of us uh we are going to give you a nice little february full of sourdough then i'm going to label the um the new one and the old one so i know which one's which but i'll i'll label it on the outside i'm covering mine with a damp cloth and putting it in the warmest area in my kitchen and then there you go and let me get this so i really feel like both starters are viable and ready to go, and I'm excited. I'm gonna be baking bread, and um, you can you can freeze these if you wanted to. You could actually freeze them, or you say, I don't wanna bake any bread for a minute. Um, I'm gonna say this is number one starter, and then I'll know that this is the younger one. Um, if I didn't wanna bake for a while, you can put this in the refrigerator and get it down to very little and feed it once a week. And you can feed it a very little. If there's only three or four tablespoons of starter in there to feed it, you don't, you, you need maybe half that much and, and water. That's it. It's going to take over with the, turn those, um, those carbohydrates into sugar and digest them and get bubbly and happy. So that's exactly where this is at. And now I'm going to put it over by the Scentsy Warmer and be done. All right, guys, let's do some sourdough recipes. Okay. Next video on in this series will be sourdough recipes. I've got Lisa's and Patty's link from Alderman Farms down below and Lisa from Sutton's Days. They're going to do their series of videos. I'm not sure. We just said, do what you want to do as a sourdough series. And from, from the start to the starter to the finish of what you're making and then make some recipes. All right. We'll see you next time for another delicious sourdough bread recipe. And I will, um, I will leave a picture of that at the very end. Okay. Cause that's what you can get from our starters.